I'm Mike Turner, Senior Industrial Designer with DG Design. I'm introducing a series of industry blogs focusing on BRED usage within a live project environment using some of the projects that we cover on a daily basis for reference. In this episode, I'm going to be talking through um, the, the business of developing shadow plots within VRED, referencing the earlier episode where we talked about off-highway vehicle design and usage of shadow plots for ISO sightline assessments. Hi guys, so yeah, I'm going to give you a bit of a walkthrough in VRED about the usage of uh, shadow plots within the software. Um, generally, to give you a bit of context, Within off-highway vehicle design, good visibility characteristics deliver safer products which are often easier to use. Um, they give less operator stress and fatigue. And as far as vehicle design goes, ensuring good visibility characteristics is just good design practice and applies to most aspects of, of what we do in our jobs. Um, we use them to assess sight lines in a, a very sort of clear black and white sense of the word. Areas in shadow are not visible from an operator's eye point when he's seated normally in the machine. Sight lines projected like this are used in design as a tool to assess and optimise bodywork and, and the interior design in many cases, allowing us to make bodywork adjustments and interior trim adjustments and to continually reassess to compare the differences and be sure that we're unlocking the right sight line goals. Um, shadow plots in real life within off-highway are used to do ISO assessments. It's a method of ensuring cab compliance and, and also as a marketing tool to give a visual indication of the visibility characteristics to buyers. The method of testing in real life is, is a light array set up within the cab and the shadow regions are plotted on, on the floor of a, a, a level area. And what I wanted to do within VRED was figure out how to replicate this method of testing in our software so we could have early sight of, of the sightline characteristics and adjust the cab and bodywork where possible as we went to ensure sort of incremental refinement. And on this project, we used it to optimize and shuffle the layout of the initial interior geometries. Uh, we did that in VRED in some cases and then exported back into Alias as an FBX, which just gave us something to use for reference as we continue to sort of model and develop the interior. And as a digital assessment tool, it's proven to be really useful as a rig. Um, now that I've got this rig up and running, I've used it on several projects since, and it always delivers rock solid results. So if we jump to VRED and we have a little bit of a look around our scene, the, the model as stands in its standard guys is, is the standard TD16N as, as we'd set it up for doing the final renderings. Um, but if I switch off the upper cab surfaces and show this rig, it gives a little bit of a flavour for what's going on. So to talk you through what's in the scene that, that I've just switched on that's of use, uh, down here we've got uh, a grid which if we highlight that, yeah, that's sat on the ground plane and that grid has been modelled in Alias uh, using the tubular offset tool to basically give us uh, a grid of squares that are one metre squared. Um, and they are centred when you look at it in plan view on the, sorry, go plan view, they're centred on the operator's eye point. So you, you can measure visibility out from that eye point and you know that each of these squares represents one meter. Um, so to go inside the cab and talk a little bit more, we've got a couple of point lights running within this scene. Uh, there's, there's one that I've got switched on here, which is centered on the operator's eye point. That's based on a 95th percentile operator from ergonomic data that we'd established and we were running through the project in Alias. Uh, and I've got a second light lower down here, which I can toggle there. Yeah, this one's based on a, a fifth percentile operator as well. So you, you've got those in the cab. Uh, and if we look at the light sources themselves in here, the light's set moderately bright, 50 on intensity. Now that's, that's just a standard point light. And, and that's all you need to conduct this test and to, to get the visualization results that communicate the shadow plot. Um, the only other thing that I would say in this scene is, is it's generally the case that when we're doing shadow plot work, we don't worry about including the headrest because that's a 
not a fixed part of the design, it's a, it's a movable item, uh, it's best to remove that because that wouldn't be assessed in real life. So if we come back to our high level graph, scroll up and come back to our light plots, if we look at it for a tool operator in the first instance, you can see that obviously based on that light point there, this gives you the shadow graph capability. If I just close that down so you can see, you get a feeling for how those two operate. So the shadows on the ground are caused by you know, the objects above, where, where the tracks cast a shadow, where the bodywork casts a shadow, where the front blade casts a shadow. That's mapped out on the grid at ground level. And these results are true to how they'd be in real life. So you get a very, very good indication as to what those visibility characteristics are. And if we come back to the shadow graph, and if I just take that off screen so you've got a bit more sight, if I toggle between the two for a small operator, you can see that the sightline characteristics are obviously different because the eye points further down. And you can bring them both at the same time if you want to get a feel for how they overlay, you know, where smaller operators uh, can see less of the blade versus taller ones. And again, a smaller operator will struggle to see over the back of the fixed part of the seat back. But um, normally when I, when I produce these images, I'll, I'll just do them as OpenGL like this. You can take screen grabs from this and obviously you, know, you can put it into flat views if you need to extract uh, sort of isometric views. But perspective view is also quite nice for, to sort of give that sort of visual indication. Um, when, I, when I render it, I'll, I'll typically just do an OpenGL output. But if I am going to be ray tracing, I'll typically switch the cab glass off so again you know you get a much clearer line and it, it processes the scene much more quickly. And these make really useful development images as you're evolving the design, as you're refining the bodywork, because it lets you sort of track the changes and the benefits, and it's a good means of communicating the status on a live project and creating formal documentation at the end to confirm the visibility characteristics. And the real joy with VRED, as we've touched on in some of the other tutorials, is that it's really nice software when you want to come and swap geometries in and out so you can keep retesting the design as it evolves and you can compare and contrast your own data and in some cases if you want to you can pull in competitor machine data as well and be sure that your visibility characteristics are you know better than, than the competition would be. This technique works really nicely as sort of giving an initial upfront assessment working in conjunction with live VR assessment um, there's nothing quite like being able to grab a headset and jump around within the cab, but if you've not got access to full VR or you just want to be able to communicate this thing graphically for the sake of communicating to other people, this method works really, really well. Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that breakdown of how we use shadow plots and how to get them set up. I hope you found that interesting and informative, and I'll see you on the next episode.